Hi all, and welcome to Miss Robbie's classroom. I'm your teacher, Miss Robbie, and today we will have another topic on our self-learning modules for Science 9. For this clip, you will need your Science 9 Module 7, your activity notebook, and a pen. Pay attention when you hear the bell sound. That means you may need to pause the video in order to do the task given. Then resume the video once you're done. And don't forget to practice honor and honesty in doing your modules. After going through the module, you're expected to explain the basic features and importance of cellular respiration, describe the function and structure of mitochondria as a site for cellular respiration, and illustrate the three stages of cellular respiration and how much ATP is made in each stage. And so with that, let's talk about Module 7, Cellular Respiration. Before we go on, let's find out what you know about the topic. Go to page 3 to 4 of your modules. Read carefully each item. Write only the letter of the best answer for each question. Answer only five items. Then write your answers in your activity notebook. Are you ready to answer? Let's go! Were you able to answer all the items in page 3? Great! Let's see how you did. Go to page 20 to 21 of your module. Pause this video while you check your work. Did you get a perfect score? Awesome! Almost perfect. That's alright. Let's do better next time. Let's have more activities that have something to do with our lesson. Go to page 5 to 6 of your modules. This activity will help you recall and check your knowledge regarding the definition and processes of cellular respiration. Study the scrambled letters and try to rearrange the letters to form a word or phrase that fits in the given clues. Write your answers in your activity notebook. Like in number one, blank is an oxygen-less respiration aided by chemical reaction to transfer energy from reactant glucose to the cell. The correct answer is anaerobic respiration. Are you ready to answer the rest? Let's go! Were you able to answer all items in what's in? Great! Let's see how you did. Go to page 20 to 21 of your module. Pause this video while you check your work. Did you get a perfect score? Awesome! Almost perfect? That's alright. Let's do better next time. Are you ready for a challenge? Go to page 6 to 7 of your module. Read the concepts and answer the guide questions that follow. Write your answers in your activity notebook. Are you ready to answer? Let's go! Were you able to answer all items from what's new? Great! Let's see how you did. Go to page 20 to 21 of your module. Pause this video while you check your work. Did you get a perfect score? Awesome! Almost perfect. That's alright. Let's do better next time. So do you have an idea what we will be talking about today? That's right. We'll be talking about cellular respiration. What is cellular respiration? This refers to the biochemical pathway by which cells release energy from the chemical bonds of food molecules and provide that energy for the essential processes of life. All organisms need energy to carry out their functions in life. Since animals and humans are heterotropic, we depend on plants and other organisms for food, not like plants that can make their own food through the process of photosynthesis. Heterotrophs cannot make their own food, so we must eat or absorb food produced by plants. 
This energy from food cannot be directly used by cells. So cells have to convert the energy stored in nutrients into a more usable form known as adenine triphosphate or ATP. What is ATP? Adenine triphosphate is the primary energy carrier in all living organisms on Earth. Now the process of breaking down food molecules, primarily glucose, is done in the mitochondria. So let's study its structure and how they fit in cellular respiration. Mitochondria is an organelle found in large numbers in most cells, in which the biochemical processes of respiration and energy production occur. Mitochondria is the site for two stages of cellular respiration, such as Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. It has an inner and outer membrane. The space enclosed by the inner membrane is called a matrix. The second stage of cellular respiration, the Krebs cycle, takes place in the matrix. The third stage, electron transport, takes place on the inner membrane. Now let's talk about the two processes of cellular respiration, the aerobic and anaerobic processes. Aerobic processes only occur if oxygen is present. When the cell needs to release energy, the cytoplasm and mitochondria initiate chemical exchanges that launch the breakdown of glucose. This sugar is carried through the blood and stored in the body as the fast source of energy. The breakdown of glucose into ATP releases carbon dioxide or CO2, a byproduct that needs to be removed from the body. Anaerobic processes, on the other hand, do not use oxygen. So the pyruvate product, ATP, is one kind of pyruvate that remains in place to be broken down or catalyzed by other reactions, such as what occurs in muscle tissues or in fermentation. Lactic acid, which builds up in muscle cells as aerobic processes fail to keep up with energy demands, is a byproduct of anaerobic process. Such anaerobic breakdowns provide additional energy, but lactic acid buildup reduces a cell's capacity to further process waste. On a large scale, in, say, a human body, this leads to fatigue and muscle soreness. So cells recover by breathing in more oxygen and through the circulation of blood helps carry away lactic acid. So let's talk about the stages of cellular respiration. Watch this short video in order to understand the stages. Then be ready to do the activity about the video afterwards. This bird, like all living animals, has cells that carry out cellular respiration. During cellular respiration, organisms break down nutrients in order to produce energy in the form of ATP. Let's take a closer look to see how this happens. If we zoom in on one of this bird's cells, we can see the mitochondria, where the majority of the reactions involved in cellular respiration occur. Let's zoom in further on a single mitochondrium. Cellular respiration consists of four primary stages. These are glycolysis, the preparatory reaction, the citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain. The first stage, glycolysis, occurs in the cytoplasm outside of the mitochondria. During glycolysis, enzymes break down glucose into two molecules of pyruvate. During this process, two ATP are produced and NADH is released to be used in a later step of cellular respiration. Stage two is the preparatory reaction. During this stage, the pyruvates of glycolysis move into the mitochondria, where they are converted into acetyl-CoA. During this conversion process, more NADH is produced and carbon dioxide is released. In stage three, the citric acid cycle the remaining carbons from the initial glucose are oxidized, releasing carbon dioxide. NADH and FADH2 are also produced, 
in addition to two ATP molecules. Most ATP production occurs in stage 4, the electron transport chain, or ETC. In this stage, the NADH and FADH2 from the previous stages give up electrons to the chain. Energy is released and captured as the electrons move from a higher energy to a lower energy state using a series of proteins embedded in the membranes of the mitochondrion. Later, this energy will be used for the production of ATP, typically 32 to 34 per initial glucose. Oxygen is used by the ETC as a terminal electron acceptor. It then combines with hydrogen ions to produce water. If we add up all the ATP produced from just one glucose molecule, we can see that these reactions produce a total of 36 to 38 ATP. Did you learn something about the stages of cellular respiration? Great! Let's see what you've learned by answering page 15. What have I learned? Summarize the three stages of cellular respiration using its biochemical reaction chart. Complete the table on your activity notebook. You can rewatch the video or use the table below for clues to understand the stages. Are you ready to answer? Good luck! Were you able to answer all items in what I've learned? Great! Let's see how you did. Go to page 20 to 21 of your module. Pause this video while you check your work. Did you get a perfect score? Awesome! Almost perfect? That's alright. Let's do better next time. Let's apply what you've just learned about cellular respiration. Go to page 12 to 14 of your module. There are three enrichment activities for you to answer in order to master and strengthen the basic concept you've just learned. Choose any two of the enrichment activities to answer. Write your answers in your activity notebook. Are you ready? Let's go! Are you able to answer all items in what's more? Great! Let's see how you did. Go to page 20 to 21 of your module. Pause this video while you check your work. Did you get a perfect score? Awesome! Almost perfect? That's alright. Let's do better next time. It's assessment time! Go to page 16 to 17. Answer the assessment and write your answers in your activity notebook. Are you ready? Let's go! Were you able to answer all items in the assessment? Great! Let's see how you did. Go to page 20 to 21 of your module. Pause this video while you check your work. Did you get a perfect score? Awesome! Almost perfect? That's alright. Let's do better next time. Congratulations! Now you know all about cellular respiration. You have now completed the lessons in quarter one. You can now take this time to review any of the modules and do any incomplete activities and submit them to your subject teacher for checking. So until next time, this is your teacher, Ms. Robbie from Ms. Robbie's Classroom. Happy studying, guys!